Hello, my name's Austin Jarrett from Allet Mowers. Today's video is going to be about whether you should be buying a rotary mower or a cylinder mower. These two mowers are quite different. You can see they look very different. And what I'd like to do today is to talk to you in quite some detail to make sure that you buy the right mower when you are choosing. So this is going to be quite a long video. So you can skip forward to where you want to go and from there you can see the different sections as and when you need to. So I need to declare an interest. Uh, I make my living out of selling cylinder mowers and uh, I'm very enthusiastic about cylinder mowers and what they can do. But, you know, I have to be honest with you, I do also own a rotary mower as well, and there are places for both. And what I want to do today is to try and give you the frankest, most honest opinion on the places where both of these mowers are strongest. From there, you can make a really good and informed decision on which is the best mower for you to buy. It's really not in Alec Mower's interest for somebody that really doesn't need a cylinder mower and it doesn't fit with them, uh, to go out of the shop uh, not buying a rotary mower when they really should have bought one. So let's look at the things as to what might make a decision as to whether you're a rotary mower person or a cylinder mower person. Uh, the rotary mower really does just cut the grass and I'm not being judgmental on this, this is something that it does really well. Um, cylinder mowers though, we're going to talk about mowing the lawn creating these wonderful, wonderful lawns that you see on our Facebook page and on our videos. But we need to look at what you want to achieve and what you have available to start with. And that might be something as simple as the amount of time that you have available and the amount of time that you want to put into your lawn. It might be to do with your grass types. If you grow tall fescues that need mowing at four inches high, then a rotary mower is definitely the right choice for you. It might be about the terrain and how bumpy your ground is. It might be about your climate and it might also be about the amount of rainfall that you have or whether you have access to irrigation. So I'm going to give you a quick general overview. If I'm only going to keep you for the next minute, then this is the bit that you need to watch. So these are the rotary mowers. Uh, rotary mowers are really good where the height of cut is above two inches and you're leaving the grass quite long. If you don't have the opportunity to mow your lawn really frequently, which is one of the best ways to get a great lawn, but if you don't have that opportunity, so the grass always escapes away from you and you're often mowing the grass when it is quite long, again, a rotary mower is better. If you have lots of sticks and stones on your lawn and you risk damaging your mower, then definitely a rotary mower is much more robust. Cylinder mowers though, are if you want to take your lawn to the absolute next level. So cylinder mowers are great for mowing really low. So I'm talking about really less than 30 millimeters, 30 millimeters and less, then these are really, this is their sweet zone. They can easily mow as low as six millimeters, a quarter of an inch. So really, really scalp it down. And that is what a cylinder mower is able to do. So that will very much depend on, uh, on the types of grasses you have and whether they can tolerate that. The finish is much, much smoother with a cylinder mower. The height of cut across the whole of the width of the mower is exactly the same and you can't beat that smooth finish. Stripes, if you want stripes on your lawn, some people love them, some people just aren't bothered. Then again, a cylinder mower really is the way forward and we'll look into the detail of why a cylinder mower creates great stripes. If you think about it in overview, if you think of a golf course where they're mowing really low on a green or even on a fairway, they will use a cylinder mower. Not of this size generally, but they will use a cylinder mower because the cutting principle is most appropriate for that and they're mowing very regularly. If you go onto the semi-rough where they're mowing uh, much less frequently, they're leaving the grass long and they're going into the grass when it's even longer, then they will use a rotary generally in principle because it is better at cutting in that environment. This is a bread and butter rotary mower. Um, and we're just gonna talk through the, the components of this and, and how it really cuts the grass. 
It's, this is a four wheel machine, one wheel in each corner, and I adjust the height of cut by lifting and lowering nose. And on this machine, this is a really good rotary machine, uh, nice and simple, uh, as you can see. It lifts and lowers the deck with adjustment on the, all four wheels. This one just happens to be a battery electric machine. Um, that, I'm preferring uh, if we can try and uh, stop burning fossil fuels, I, I really like that idea. But the basics of the deck and the grass cutting are really the most important thing uh, that we need to look at today. I can tip this machine over, another advantage of a battery machine, I don't have to worry about the spillage of the fuel. And the principle of these machines is all about this blade here. So we have two sharp edges and this blade rotates and that cuts the grass. Of course, it's rotating in this plane and cutting the grass as you travel forward. And you can see in here, this rotary mower blade rotating in this direction. It revolves at a much higher speed than this, and that action means that it cuts the grass. The blade itself is tilted forward, so the front here is lower than the back, and that means that as it rotates, it's cutting and scything on this forward portion, and then at the back, it's discharging. It discharges out of the rear of the deck and on this particular machine it discharges straight into the grass box here. The grass box is removable. I can leave this off and I can drop the grass clippings to floor. I can put that on and it collects. So this is the rotary blade and the principle of cutting the grass is as this rotates it's just impacting onto the side of the blade and causing a fracture of the blade itself. There is sharpness to this blade and it's really easy to sharpen it. Keep the blade sharper, the nicer the quality of the cut, the less the engine will struggle to drive and cut the grass. You'll also notice here there is a slight bend at the back and this is not unlike a, a propeller blade on an, on an old aeroplane where as it turns it then creates suction down at the grass level. So it sucks the grass upright before it cuts the blades of grass and that's a really nice feature of this and this is one of the reasons why uh, rotary mowers work so well when they're leaving the grass longer on higher heights of cut because it sucks the grass upright before it then cuts it. The very front edge of the rotary mower blade you can see this one already has damage on it but it's a very robust edge and you can see where it's hit stones or maybe even manhole covers things like that and it doesn't really stop it from cutting you just keep sharpening that blade up uh, and it's a very robust cutting system. If you have gravel that drops onto your lawn and you hit the, this uh, gravel with this blade, it's not really going to stop you from mowing that day. The rotary mower market is really competitive and you generally get what you pay for. You can buy a, a rotary mower for a hundred bucks or a hundred euros or you can spend like this one actually is closer to two thousand uh, dollars, 2,000 euros. Um, what do you get for the money? You get stronger decks. This is cast aluminium. You can get pressed steel, you can get plastic. Plastic ones are lighter, but they're less durable. Wheels with bearings, more power. Uh, and those types of things, including the ease of adjustment, all add together to make the machine higher grade and, and more money. But generally, this is such a competitive market that the more money you spend, the better the machine will be in terms of its longevity and also its quality of cut and also its ability to collect the grass clippings well. One final thing that you can have with a rotary mower is if you really want to up your game on the lawn, that you want to stick to a rotary mower, you can go for striping too within a rotary mower. The striping is not perfect, uh, we are going to be talking about perfect striping in a minute, but with this mower for instance, if I remove the grass box, you can see that they've made some effort to, to give this mower striping ability by adding a small rubber flap to the back. And that just helps lay down the grass so that there's some element of stri striping. We'll show you this working in a minute and uh, you'll see you yourself how effective that is. If you want to go to the next level, you can buy rotary mowers with rear roller assemblies on, which drive through the rear roller, and that roller much better presses the grass down and creates a striped lawn effect, and that considerably increases the price of the machine. We'll show you one of those machines in a minute too. We're going to now look at cylinder mowers. 
Cylinder mowers and the cutting action you'll have heard so many times. Cylinders is about cutting like scissors. We have the rotating cylinder blade and then underneath that there is a stationary bottom blade uh, and between the two of them they cut the grass like scissors. And that is typically illustrated when I just tip the machine back like so uh, and get a piece of paper. This is a nice sharp and fairly new mower and when I insert the paper between the two blades then what I get is the paper cut like scissors. So that cutting action is really important and we're going to talk about quality of cut and why it is so important. The other thing a cylinder mower generally has is they have both rollers at the front and at the rear. Uh, both of those combine in order to give a very consistent height of cut. Uh, the front roller is normally adjusted in order to give variations in height of cut and the rear roller is actually driven by the engine or by the batteries and uh, that drive leaves behind the, really the best stripes that you can get. To get a really fine lawn you do need to collect the grass clippings so there's no side discharge, there's no mulching generally with a cylinder mower. What I do is I always collect the grass clippings. And again, generally with a cylinder mower, then by putting the grass box at the front, the grass is cut and then taken over the top of the bottom blade and ejected into the front grass box. Uh, that always ensures that everything that is cut technically has to go then into the grass box. It can't escape back down to the ground. So it does give a really good clean cut and also picks up all of the grass clippings. Height of cut adjustment on a cylinder mower is generally done with the front roller position. Not on this machine, it's really simple and easy to use. This is the front roller and I just need to lift this up and down and I just have an adjustment knob at the back here which I can move in order to get the adjustment. I only adjust the front roller on this because actually the machine can tilt forward, the bottom blade will go lower and that will be my new height of cut. And finally, as part of the brief overview of the cylinder mower, then what is the difference between a low cost cylinder mower and a higher cost cylinder mower? And again, it's generally about the weight of the product. The heavier the machine, the more durable it is, but also critically with a cylinder mower, the heavier they are, the deeper the stripe and the longer, more longer lasting the stripe is. But uh, the ease of adjustment is also a thing, and also whether they're battery or whether they're engine drive. The batteries uh, do just make the price a little bit higher. But generally, again, the more you pay for your cylinder mower, the, the longer it's going to last and the better the quality of the finish. So let's look at the direct comparisons now. And the first thing I want to look at, which, which I consider to be probably one of the most important things to me, and that is about the quality of cut. We've looked at the cutting action of the rotary mower based around this blade and the standard way of describing this is cut like a machete. It relies on this speed revolving at very high speed to impact on the grass blade plant and to tear off the top of the plant. That probably sounds a little bit crude but in fact that's exactly what it does. The cylinder we've also looked at already and how it cuts like scissors. And when you look at the tops, the cut point on a blade of grass under a microscope, you can see that the impact damage of the machete type cut is very much more considerable than the very sharp, precise impact point of the two blades cutting like scissors. So why is that actually important? By cutting more cleanly like scissors, you get much less damage to the plant. That is a much kinder, much healthier action on the plant. You get less bleeding at the point of cut. If we get that, we also get less disease able to enter the plant or to develop at the injury site. And you also lose less moisture from the plant as well. So again, it can start its path of recovery before you're then going to cut it again. 
and that quick recovery is really important to keep a healthy plant so it can be recovering more than it is uh, uh, being injured, shall we say. Uh, and probably the final part is I want my grass to look really nice and green, as green as it can possibly be, and as soon as I end up with very brown tips, which are caused by the impact of a machete type cut, then the lawn just doesn't look as green, it has that brown tinge to it. The next thing I want to talk about, uh, which I think is really relevant when it comes to grass cutting, is to talk about the third of the height rule. Uh, and that is about, I've pulled a sample of grass out of this lawn, it's, it's normally a, a relatively well kept lawn, and you can see here the height of the plant now that it's ready for mowing. So I'm going to say that's about, about 30 millimetres, something like that, an inch and a quarter. And the cutting height that we normally use here is about 20 millimetres. So if we just work that out, height of the plant is 30 millimetres, a third of that is 10 millimetres, which would, if you subtract that, mean that the height of cut should be 20 millimetres. If I start to cut more of that off, this grass is actually well trained to be cut at 20 millimetres high, so the stalk or the stem is actually quite short and the leaves are quite long here. And when I cut in from 30 down to 20 millimetres, I've got lots of leaf that's showing. And the leaf is the green lawn that you see. If you start to cut more of that off, then you're getting down into the stalk is remaining and the lawn looks really white, it doesn't look green. Also, the plants need the leaves in order to photosynthesize and to be healthy. So it's really important that we cut this, uh, 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 this using this third of the plant rule. If I start to regularly cut this lawn once a fortnight and I'm taking it from maybe three inches high down to 20 millimeters, three inches down to three quarters of an inch, uh, then I would constantly be cutting into the stalk all the time and that will never give me a great lawn. Now I want to do a comparison with a lawn that really isn't cut regularly enough. Uh, really it's a patch of grass and so what I'm going to do is compare these two samples here. Uh, this one cut 20 millimetres high, cut at least once a week taking 10 millimetres off and this lawn here where you can see the height is much more like a 100 millimetres uh, and what are you going to do when you mow this? You're going to be mowing it down again at maybe 30 millimetres high uh, and you're taking much more like 70% of the grass plant off in order to get it looking like a lawn at all. And if I do that, then I'll be cutting off all the leaf and what will be remaining will be the stalk and you'll just never have a nice looking lawn. This is the test now to show you the difference in stripe between a four wheel rotary mower, a rotary mower with a rear roller and then a standard cylinder mower. We're going to run these up and down, mowing at about 30 millimetres high, and you'll be able to choose for yourself. Actually, which is the stripe which is good enough for me, if you're going to be really fanatical, or whether you're going to go, the grass is cut. Whichever it is, you'll be able to see the difference here. Here we have the test then of the stripes. The first machine is the four wheel rotary mower and it merely has a flap at the back in order to try and lay the grass down in order to create the stripe. And as you can see, as you would expect, there is not much contrast between the stripe going away from you or the stripe coming towards you. Not really that different at all. And when I look more closely, because the wheels of the machine cut are laying down the grass in front of the cutting so I can see that there's long grass uh, wheel marks here and within a day's time those will be standing back upright and I'll see on the evenness over the height of cut. That may be good enough for you in which case that mower is just fine. We move on to the next one a rotary mower again but now with a rear roller and you can see that makes such a difference. The machine is heavier in itself, the machine is also more expensive, but on the light green stripe and the dark green stripe you can see there's a good contrast. We haven't cut a lot of grass off here, 
probably 10 millimetres, taking our height of cut down to 20 millimetres. Uh, if you cut even more grass off, because the blade rotates, actually the grass is laid down in one direction and towards you in the other, and then the roller lays it down. You don't get an exact uh, uh, contrast uh, on both sides here because the stripe is slightly lighter on one side than it is on the other. But still, really good show there. What a difference that rear roller makes. But when we come to the master of stripes, of course, it is the cylinder mower. The cylinder treats every blade of grass in exactly the same way. So the stripe is exactly the same, dark, uh, light green on this side, dark green on that side, and it is exactly contrasting over the whole width. So there's no doubt that, as you'd expect, a cylinder mower, the full rear roller, really does make that difference. Let's talk about the grass collection side of things now. It's our opinion, if you want a really great lawn, you do need to collect the grass clippings. There is very limited advantages of mulching. In fact, it can cause problems, but we believe that you need to collect the grass clippings. You speak to any golf course superintendent, that's what he'd tell you. If you're mowing really, really high, you can leave grass clippings and you can mulch. But generally for a nice lawn, which is cut lower, you've got to collect the grass clippings. On a rotary mower, traditionally, you have the grass box at the rear of the mower. On a cylinder mower, we throw the grass clippings forward, making sure we collect all the grass clippings, but we do have the grass box at the front. So let's see what happens when you come to the corner and the uncut part that you leave with the cylinder mower, which is one of its disadvantages. Let's talk about speed of mowing as well and again this is a bit of a generalization but uh, cylinder mowers for the same engine horsepower of machine will always be quicker and the reason that they're quicker is because the fast, if they go faster that you don't get any depletion in the quality of cut that they achieve and that's because of the clip rate that's the, the speed at which the blades pass over the bottom blade and therefore how often they clip and generally the faster you go the, the reel just goes faster and you get a really good clip rate. They also take up less horsepower and less fuel and so it means that we can make the cylinder mowers go much more quickly than a rotary mower, certainly for the same horsepower because of the power absorbed by the rotary mower. Also the faster you go the bigger the, 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 bigger the, the amount of grass that it has to take with each swipe of the blade. So. Um, the other thing probably to point out is because the cylinder mower and you need to mow the grass more regularly if you go away two weeks, you can come back and you can still mow with a rotary mower. That will be fine. With a cylinder mower, the grass gets a little bit long, uh, a little bit too long, then it's not going to be able to cope with that. So you do need to mow more regularly. So even though it's quicker, you need to do it more often. So there's always a balance there as well. Just going to demonstrate, this is quite a quick machine anyway, but I'm just going to demonstrate these very similar Honda engines on them. Uh, I'm going to call on my beautiful assistant, Laura, uh, and we're going to have a race. thing about having a front and rear roller on a mower as well like you do with a cylinder mower is when you're working up against edges in this instance in a path but it might be on the edge of a flower bed where it's sunken like this that I can actually run right over the edge like this and make sure that I cut as much of the grass and leave as little strumming and edging work as I possibly can. With a wheeled rotary like so I can only run up to the edge otherwise I'm going to drop off the edge and I'm just going to scalp all the turf off. So this is one of the nice advantages as well of front and rear rollers. Now let's talk about price. It's obviously a very important consideration. 
Rotary mowers come in all sorts of forms. We talked about different levels of duty and different levels of price. You can get very low cost, low featured, low weight rotary mowers, certainly without rear rollers and just four wheels push. Uh, cylinder mowers are a lot more complex. It's not just a metal blade bolted to a crankshaft. There's a lot more going on with a, rotary, with a cylinder mower uh, and the precision of just grinding all the blades, all that type of thing, uh, give you a mower which uh, is just more expensive to build. These are also much more mass produced and generally built in, in China uh, and uh, these are manufactured in the UK for instance uh, as are other manufacturers of cylinder mowers manufactured in, in, uh, in more developed and more expensive countries. To give you a rough idea, a little 70 to 17 inch machine here versus a, a 20 inch rotary like this. This is a very heavy duty machine. You're looking uh, for the garden uh, at similar sorts of prices. Uh, when I then start to compare with a much heavier machine like the Buckingham machine over there, much more heavy duty altogether, you're talking this machine is more than three times the price of a small machine like this. Added on top of that, I have to be frank with you as well, in terms of maintenance costs. I've got the engine I've got to maintain on here, same with a like-for-like -like engine machine, but really all I need to do is to replace the blade or even sharpen the blade at intervals. Really nothing else uh, to worry about. I do need to keep the blade sharp on these machines. They do need regrinds, they do need backlapping. The engine is a like-for-like -like situation. So there is more maintenance cost on a cylinder mower in order to achieve these higher levels of maintenance of the, of the grass. And now let's look at the versatility of these machines. Again, rotary versus cylinder. Uh, rotary is able to handle long grass. There's no doubt about that. The, the machete action of the blade really comes into its own. The cylinder has um, a disadvantage in terms of the way that it cuts, but also in terms of the front and rear rollers as well. So we're going to show this now in, can you call this a lawn, um, with long grass, and we'll show how this machine copes and, uh, and how it just takes the grass shorter. We're going to be breaking a third of the black grass plant height rule because it doesn't really matter when your lawn looks like this anyway. Um, but you're going to see the difference of the two and I'm expecting this machine uh, not to give a very good result. So why would I buy a cylinder? Well actually I mow my lawn more frequently in order to get the best results. I stick to the third of the grass plant height rule um, in order to get a great lawn and that is when this machine absolutely comes into its own. So let's have a look at how it copes in the long grass. So there's the test. If you're going to be mowing your grass from this height down, then the rotary mower is the mower for you if you're going to be doing this regularly. You can see on this there's a lot of grass here. Okay, it did block the shoot up, the conditions are dry, but you know at the end of the day we've got something now that we can do something with. In fact, this might be ready now for cylinder mowing. The cylinder mower itself, really, you can just see, it just laid down more grass with the front roller than it did actually cut anything. And, and the reason for that is, literally, when a blade of grass is run over by the uh, front roller, it's still being laid down by the front roller by the time the cutting blade gets to it. So it's being held down and, and it can't cut. There are wheel kit options to go on the front so that that doesn't happen. But even so, you're really just getting yourself out of, a, out of a difficult situation. It is not a long grass mower. These mowers mow short grass shorter. How easy are these machines to use? The rotary mower itself is really quite uncomplicated. A rotary mower blade bolted the crankshaft of the engine. How complicated can it get? The only two things really you've got to con be concerned about is the forward speed that you work at. So if you're cutting long grass, you need to be able to slow it down if it's not cutting the grass properly. The engine might try and stall. Um, keeping the blade sharp uh, and also the height of cut. So again, if I'm not cutting nicely, I maybe just need to lift the height of cut up. 
you have similar choices with the cylinder mower but I do need to be able to do the adjustment of the cylinder to the bottom blade clearance and I, I normally just have adjusters on either side of the cylinder there to be able to achieve that so you need to think about whether you you can learn or are prepared to make those adjustments people are used to doing it don't consider it to be a problem but it definitely is a, is a technical difference the blades need to be kept sharp in order to cut cleanly uh, that for an ordinary domestic situation is every couple of years, maybe even more. Uh, you can use backlapping and we have another video uh, which refers to backlapping and how to achieve that in order to keep a sharp edge on the blade. But uh, there is definitely stuff that you need to think about there. Adjustment of height of cut depends which mower. They can be as easy as just turning a knob uh, or on this one you do need to get a spanner out in order to change the height of cut. But again, generally with a cylinder mower you are maintaining at the same height of cut all the time. As far as engine maintenance is concerned, that is exactly the same and uh, that isn't really part of the consideration. So um, definitely um, you need to think carefully about whether you've got or are prepared to do the technical things with a cylinder mower that really you don't need to do with your machete mower. The other thing uh, about a rotary mower is with the air movement of the blade that when it comes to light amounts of debris uh, that they, they do vacuum up and put in the grass bag uh, just light amounts of debris. Uh, they will chop up sticks and those sort of things are not a risk to a rotary mower. To a cylinder mower uh, it doesn't move the same amount of air so mowing will not generally pick up uh, uh, this type of debris. It will cut through debris like this, but as, as it gets thicker and becomes bigger sticks, then you need to be careful of that. And certainly stones are, although they will chip a blade on a rotary mower, they will really cause quite serious damage to a cutting blade on a cylinder. So you do need to make sure that you sweep the, eye, the lawn with your eye to make sure there are no stones dropped onto the lawn. A lot of cylinder mowers, not just us, but we have competitors too, that have interchangeable cartridges. And actually, if you put in a scarifier cartridge or a sweeping brush cartridge, that they will eat all this debris and actually probably do a better job than a rotary mower with things like acorns uh, and other sticks and debris. So it's not to say that a cylinder mower can't clean up, because it certainly can if you buy additional cartridges to replace the cylinder. One other thing with the rotary mower as well, if you've got a lot of glass around your house, then do be aware that a rotary mower can discharge stones to the side, especially if you're using a side discharge chute. Uh, it will pick up a stone and it will project it out at quite a high speed and can break glass. That doesn't happen within a cylinder mower. A cylinder mower is always safe uh, from the point of view of discharging. So I hope this video hasn't been too long and some of you have uh, carried on watching through but now I just really want to summarise this whole rotary versus cylinder. So cylinder mowers, they are about lower heights of cut. They are about striping your lawn. Uh, if those are really important to you then cylinder mower is absolutely the way that you should be going. They are more expensive to buy. Uh, they are more difficult to adjust uh, because they are so precise. But, you know, the results are worth it to the people that are going to buy a rotary mower. Um, you also have the ability on some of the models, for instance this Liberty here, where you can pull out the cylinder and put in other cartridges. And that gives you a whole lawn care system, which again, if you are really into your lawn and you enjoy the finish that the cylinder gives you, then you will also appreciate the benefits that gives. And we have lots of videos talking about interchangeable cartridges on our channel. Rotary mowers, you know, they really are general purpose. If you have found that you have got quite bored with the detail of this video, then, to be frank, you probably are a rotary mower customer. And the majority of people do buy rotary mowers because they are so simple. And let's face it, they just want to cut the grass. But um, just that whole ease of use thing that you get from a rotary mower is also very appealing. But if you want a really great lawn, then cylinder mowers are the way for you to go forward. So thank you very much for watching the video. If you need any more information, please visit us at www.alit.co.uk.